have to introduce our two dynamic um, speakers today. Um, first, we have Taz from Bromwich and Smith. And Taz has been in the finance industry for 18 years and has her adult, education, adult educator certificate. Taz is passionate about simplifying complex financial concepts for Canadians and about getting tough conversations started in order to find the right solution to move on and up. Look at that great picture of you. <laughs> Taz is the um, community engagement partner at Bromwich and Smith, licensed insolvency trustees, and has been featured on Global TV, AM 770, and on the Aaron Sky Kelly Achievement Club webinars. In her spare time, you can find Taz facilitating personal development workshops, hiking in Canmore, practicing hot yoga, volunteering, networking, and reading. How do you have time to do your job, Taz? <laughs> That's a lot. Okay, and next I would just love to introduce Mike April of April Tax Solutions. So Mike has had the entrepreneurial drive since about the age of 12. After retiring from the Air Force working on CF-18 fighter aircrafts, in 1996, Mike turned to becoming property investor for, with foreclosures to his current position providing tax solutions uh, for small business owners. He lived in Calgary, Alberta since 1996. Um, Michael has always looked to develop and mentor businesses to our youth and teach them how to fish, which is so important. He has been involved with Junior Achievement Company program, uh, was an active contributor with the Calgary Chamber of Commerce, where he received the 2012 Volunteer of, of the Year Award. He is also a best-selling author, uh, Entrepreneur Success Stories. And most recently, and we saw this, and congratulations, he had a spotlight profile in the February 2021 Business in Calgary magazine. Many businesses throughout Canada are just getting by, and the feeling of the financial pain in the relationship, and Michael's vision is to change that. So we are so privileged to have both of you here today. So let's get started. Well, good morning, everyone, or good day if you're watching this on a replay. I just want to share with you a little bit about being a business owner. Uh, number one, stop overpaying your taxes or find solutions that can keep you from overpaying your taxes. There's, the Tax Act is so broad. There's so many opportunities that just, just aren't shared with business owners or maybe they just haven't yet found them out. So anyhow, next, please. I'll give you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm, uh, I've been in Calgary now since 1996. I loved it. I actually picked this city when I left the military, out of all the cities I had lived in across Canada and even living in Germany, I picked the city of Calgary because I thought it was so entrepreneurial, it had a global feel. It had flights going to Frankfurt, to London, Heathrow, to direct to San Francisco, Los Angeles. It, it, it was just the right fit. And I knew that at the time. And I've, I haven't been disappointed since. I love serving, serving people, giving them opportunities to do better and, uh, also sharing my insights that I've learned to be able to help them along that way. Uh, it's all about finding money that CRA doesn't deserve. People don't realize it, but you know, sometimes when you do your taxes on your, on your own and you don't know all, all, of, the, all of the opportunities that, are, that await you when you do your taxes and you just decide, oh, it's small, I, can, I know what I'm doing, I'll just file it, save myself a couple of dollars. Well, actually you might be leaving a lot of dollars on the table because you missed you missed uh, an opportunity that was there to uh, either share with your spouse or, or other, other deductions which you might have overlooked. So um, I really care about the client finances and getting the businesses off the ground. The, the statistics that I see that businesses, I think they say two out of five businesses fail in their first five years. And I just wanted to be that mechanism that, that could influence those numbers by, uh, through what I do. Uh, as you can see in the picture, I love my wife, Anna. We've been married for over 36 years. We have two, two lovely children that are now 26 and 24. We have two cats, which I consider my fur babies, and uh, a lovely toy poodle as well. And uh, it's, it's just great to uh, pull together family and, and, and to have, have that to work towards. And you know, that's what the business finances are for, for giving your family a better quality of life. It's not for, creating this mass amount of wealth and keep them in with it. Uh, I always strive to over deliver. I have great friends around me. Core values are really important too. Accuracy, commitment, integrity, 
and grateful appreciation, not only for clients, but the people that I connect with, the business people, the people in the BBB, people at the Chamber of Commerce, all of those that form this community that we can all do better through, through collaborative involvement, such as this, this webinar. And at the end of the day, love to laugh and have fun. I was just saying prior to, prior to starting, you know, I'm a big fan of the Calgary Roughnecks and the Calgary Hitmen, and we used to be a billet family going back for about eight years and uh, we really enjoyed you know developing that community spirit and uh and, and i love watching the flames too so anyhow next please here's some of the things uh that that have uh sh helped uh shape who i am today uh back in 2015 i was fortunate to write with my mentor uh, mr colin sprake who's a big business coach and trainer with uh, Make Your Mark. And we wrote an anthology together with a few other authors and it's called Entrepreneur Success Stories. It is available on Amazon if you want it. And we did make the bestseller list, topping off uh, 50 Shades of Grey for a couple days. So that was a big feat. So it wasn't only in our category, it was across all, all of the book sales in those two days. Uh, the other one is the 2012 Volunteer of the Year. And uh, again, it was an honor for me to receive this from the Calgary Chamber and Mr. Our Calgary Mayor Nahid Nanchi uh, made the presentation to me. And uh, again, just mentioned if you can pick up Business in Calgary Magazine, February 2021 edition, out just last month, uh, you'll be able to see a profile on my business and learn more about who I am. Next, please. Okay, you ready for the, for the nuts and bolts? Okay, so make sure you have a pen and paper. Okay, we're going to talk about what's out there right now for the government programs. Some of you may know, some of you might not know, so let's just touch briefly on them. Right now for the business owners is the COVID programs. Uh, if you go to Canada.ca, if you put in the Google, Google browser search, Canada.ca space COVID, you'll come up with all the programs that are available for your person, like the CERB and other things, uh, as well as uh, the business programs, such as these ones I'm going to touch on. So the, the CEWS is the, is the wage subsidy program, and that pays on a scale based on your employees. So if you had a, a revenue drop from last year over this period, then you would receive uh, compensation from the federal government in the form of a check for different periods. Originally, it started back uh, going back from March 15th, of 2020 and that program um, actually just closed off the first six periods uh, at the start uh, on March 1st so but the other other periods are still available if you, if you did have a revenue drop you're still able to uh, apply for that and maybe get some compensation for and, and the incentive was to be able to uh, kind of prop up uh, for the the wages that you're paying out to staff to keep them employed rather than putting them on, on the layoff and having them go through either the CERB payments or the EI payments. Uh, so that is still available. And in fact, uh, our prime minister just announced that they're gonna be extending it. It was supposed to end March 31st of 2021, but it's now being ex extended into June. So that's great news. Uh, I think they're passing it through the house probably uh, next week. The other one is the rent subsidy. Now this was a bit of, of a fiasco when it started because they, although you might've had a revenue drop and the revenue drop had to be quite substantive of 70% of revenues. And you know, I saw a lot of business owners, maybe the revenue dropped 50%, but what we wanted to, what they wanted to do is create an, uh, an opportunity to be able to help them out. Like some people had pretty substantive lease costs, but they didn't even have their doors open to bring in any revenue. So what that did is it helped them out. The unfortunate part is in the early stages, it only covered if your landlord applied on behalf of you. So, I mean, you could go to your landlord and say, hey, I'd like to apply. And if you didn't submit the paperwork, you'd just never get it. So, and some of the, some of the landlords, and some of our buildings are own, owned by people in, in other countries. So, of course, their, their involvement uh, was less than, uh, uh, they, were, they just weren't applying on your behalf. Uh, 
as of November of last year, the rent subsidy actually changed its form because they got a lot, the government got a lot of flack on how it was administered. The business owner could apply. They would again have to state their revenues. And it was actually, uh, compensation was given out based on revenue drop uh, on a sliding scale. So even if you had 1% revenue drop, you could be entitled to some, some financial support on that. And right up to 65% was the max that you receive. And there was also an extra, there was also a lockdown subsidy. So if let's, let's say we know like the fitness facilities or the restaurants, let's say the fitness facilities, for example, like the spin, spin rooms and stuff like that, if they had to close completely down, there was also an extra lockdown uh, bonus, which was, was, was put into that rent subsidy as well. And the other one that's out there is the Alberta Small Medium Enterprise Relaunch Grant, which uh, gave out $20,000 uh, to help get businesses off, uh, restarted once again after they had shut down for COVID. And they're also extending, they just announced, uh, I guess it was yesterday in the news, that there's going to be, I believe, another 30,000, which will be coming available. And we're just waiting for the details on how that's going to roll out. Next. So what, as a business owner, what can you do better? And then how do you find out about these programs and uh, implement them? Next. Well, let's look at some things that people just take for granted. When you do your, uh, I'm just gonna give you, give you a, an overview. Most business owners grow their business the best they can. And unfortunately, we're not told everything that we need to do. We just kind of take, the basics to get their business started and we, we just go and go with what we know. And sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So you don't know that you can implement it. When we meet them, uh, initially when we were meeting clients, uh, we, were, we were only finding them because they were neglected by their previous accountant or maybe their accountant died. And that's kind of how we grew, grew our business. And we just slowly started finding this niche in that in our discovery, discovery meeting, we covered many areas of the business and we really found out how they operate. And we found out each business owner was unique. And one of the things that drives them is that there's different life events to determine what income levels are needed at different times in your life and how best to distribute it. And, uh, and in many cases, uh, it, during this discovery meeting that we have with clients one-on-one, -on -one, uh, it unearths several years of, of businesses maybe overpaying their taxes because they weren't informed. So I'm going to touch on a few that I think are uh, probably not well known, but uh, maybe you could implement uh, starting today and, and do better. Uh, one of them is penalties and interest. CRA um, assigns penalties and interest uh, routinely on late filing and all the rest of that. So if you're filing your tax return and uh, for example, if you're a corporation, you have 90 days to pay the amount that's owing on your taxes. You have six months to file it, but the interest starts to accrue after that 90 day window. So it's really important that uh, you, know, you, you try to find out, get a good handle on, on how much you owe and then pay that by the 90 day window so that the interest doesn't accrue. Uh, the other thing we can we can touch on is uh, income distribution. Uh, it's it's about you know do you have a spouse that works in your business? Maybe does your books for you? Uh, maybe uh, picks up the supplies for your business. And uh, also, what can you do to create more expenses? Because at the end of the day, you're only taxed on your net profit. So that's revenues minus all of your expenses equals your net profit, and that's the number that you're taxed on. So what else can you do inside your business? Well, I talked to a lot of business owners and a lot of them don't even, they set up their business, but they felt that they couldn't afford a health plan. Well, you can actually have a private health spending account created in your business. I just kind of call it pay as you go. Because if you have you know, a, a toothache and you have to go to the dentist and pay for it, usually that's out of pocket. But if you have a corporation, you can now expense that through your business and then it becomes 100% writable. So there's little things like that that you can look at. When you do your income distribution as well, you know, um, if you split your income between your spouse, 
uh, you know, that could mean that you, all of a sudden it keeps you in two lower tax brackets between the both of you. And the last one I want to talk about is the GST filing. When you file your GST and kind of put it together, a lot of people might be paying penalties and interest because their GST filing when they set it up was either monthly or quarterly. Normally, I suggest if your business is starting out, uh, go to an annual filing every GST. The reason being is that you actually have 90 days to pull your information after your year end before the interest starts to accrue on the amount that you owe. However, if you're on monthly, you have 30 days, and if you're quarterly, you only have 30 days to pull together your GST amounts and file them. Otherwise, you get a late filing penalty and the interest accrues on the amount that you owe. A couple of neat things there. The other thing too is if you're a service-based business, it's really important. Uh, uh, one thing you might consider is going to the quick method. Now, what that what that means is you collect five percent of the GST. So let's say you had an item that you you uh, charged out hundred dollars, so that'd be hundred and five dollars. Then your GST would be payable at the five dollars. However, all you have to remit is three point six percent. It's a flat percentage rate of the GST you collect. And that's, that for many business owners would be a time saver and be a lot simpler to get your GST filed on time. Last thing I wanna talk about is tax situations. Uh, I know I'm running out of time, but one of the things I wanna highlight here is that CRA, if you don't file on time, or if you have multiple years that you haven't filed, CRA will create what they call a notional assessment. What that does is it, they create a fake let's call it a fake tax return. And what that means is that they create a notional assessment so they have something to collect upon. So they create, they create these fictitious numbers and they might say, okay, you owe $6,000 on your taxes. And they'll start collecting on, on that amount of that return that they've created on your behalf. Now, that can be troublesome. In fact, I had one client, he owed about $120,000 in notional assessments and CRA was moving quite aggressively on collections towards him and throwing him into the courts to seize all of his assets. What we were able to do is we were able to file, work with the client, file the real returns and we actually reduced his taxes owing to about $32,000 after all was said and done. So we were able to help file the real returns get him back on track with CRA and we've kept him compliant ever since and on falling on time and doing better. And, but sometimes, you know, that debt is real. It stands out there and, you know, it just kind of, it's hanging over your head and you know that the amount of income that you're bringing in just isn't going to get in front of that debt that you owe the CRA. And that's where uh, a, a trustee might be suggested and uh, I'm going to let uh, Taz take it over from here and uh, tell you about some of your options if that debt is really weighing you down and you, and you need to get out of it and looking for a solution. Thanks so much, Mike. That was so informative. I learned so many little secrets and tips. Yeah, I see Maria clapping. I agree. Well, thanks so much. Um, that was a great segue. So, um we can actually go on to the next slide right away here, Tyra. I want to say thank you to the BBB for having us and for hosting this really great topic. I think it's important that we talk about some of these things that maybe we don't really feel comfortable talking about, but hopefully today we've equipped you, you know, but once I'm done, hopefully we've um, equipped you with just some, some tips and some, you know, great information that you can go forward and action. So um, my name is Taz, as we said earlier, I'm the community engagement partner at Bromwich and Smith. So in my role, I get to do a lot of really normalizing the conversation of debt in the community and, and helping Canadians just understand what their rights are and make really informed decisions. So uh, a little bit about Bromwich and Smith, we'll just get into right now. A little bit of bragging here. We actually were a finalist for the Better Business Bureau Torch um, Award, the Hero of Trust Award last year. Um, we didn't actually win it, but we're trying again this year and we've won a few other awards as you can see here as well. We can go to the next slide. So Bromwich and Smith, you know, our purpose is really to relieve that overwhelming financial burden that individuals are facing, and that's in accordance with Canadian legislation. So all licensed insolvency trustees are actually federally licensed, federally legislated. Um, and the way that we want to do that is by treating every single person with grace and respect. I know firsthand what it feels like when you're in debt and you just feel like you're drowning and you just 
There's all these, there's this shame and stigma and you feel that everybody's going to judge you or do one of these, right? So we want you to know that at Bromwich and Smith, we are going to treat you with, with grace and respect. We provide impartial and unbiased information. So again, back in my banking days, I would hear people say things like, oh, don't call a trustee. They're going to put you into bankruptcy. Well, you need to actually be insolvent to do one of the programs that we offer. So it's a great place to get that, you know, um, objective information. We foster diversity and we do have a library of resources. I actually write most of our blogs. So I encourage you to check those out. Next slide, please. So our core values, and this is really important to me. This is what sets Bromwich and Smith apart from other licensed insolvency trustees, I really feel, because we live these values. They're not just a piece of paper hanging on the wall. So, you know, we work with the highest level of integ integrity, ethics, and honesty in all aspects of what we do. We've given back hundreds of thousands of dollars to our clients um, from actually, you know, GST refunds that the government would send to the trustee. But once everything was over and done with, we've returned that back to our clients, um, earning the trust of all of our stakeholders, including the BBB. We develop long-term relationships based on knowledge and understanding through a caring and sensitive approach. We embrace change. Oh man, this has been a year of change, hasn't it? <laughs> we really recognize that individual responsibility as a means of empowerment, really taking on responsibility and feeling kind of like what Mike was saying earlier, rather than just giving someone a fish, we want to be teaching people how to fish, right? And then we're an organization of major diversity, which is super cool and strengthens us. So we can go to the next slide, please. So what do we do at Bromwich and Smith? The two federally legislated debt forgiveness programs that we offer are consumer proposal and bankruptcy. And then we also have tons of education and tools. And then we refer out to reputable, you know, accredited business partners when it comes to credit counseling, debt management program, orderly payment of debt. Um, we also will refer to really great tax specialists like Mike. So uh, really good to know that, you know, we have those great relationships. Next slide, please. All right, so you've probably heard this statement, right? Um, and it's becoming an accepted fact that there is really no relief from tax debt or, you know, death, of course. Um, so not only, um, you know, can paying back your taxes be emotionally and financially draining, it can also, as Mike had said earlier, lead to interest and penalty charges. So, um, you know, Canada Revenue Agency can garnish your wages, they can freeze your bank accounts, they can put a lien on your property, all in an effort to collect on those taxes that you owe. So let's go to the next slide, please. So Canada Revenue Agency might be willing to work with you proactively um, if you deal with them directly. So for those that are unable to pay their taxes, CRA does offer, it's called the Taxpayer Relief Provisions. Um, and it's a program to allow Canadians who qualify to have their interest charges and penalties waived under just the following guidelines. It has to be extraordinary circumstances, natural disaster, civil disturbances, um, a pandemic, Actions of CRA, so if it's something that they kind of like what, you know, Mike was talking about earlier, if they sort of miscalculated, um, or financial hardship at a level approaching poverty. Now, it's important to know, even if you qualify for this relief, the CRA only forgives the penalties and interest, not the principal, and it's not debt forgiveness. It's sort of just, you know, debt kind of pushing away a little bit further. It's kind of debt deferment, really. Next slide, please. So what if you're unable to pay your taxes as they become due or as the penalties and fees become overwhelming? Well, there's good news. There's an option to help with CRA debt and it's through a licensed insolvency trustee like Bromwich and Smith. To make a deal for less than the full amount of tax owed, you must file into either a consumer proposal or a bankruptcy um, through, so that Canada Revenue Agency would actually be legally bound by that agreement. Um, most folks know that what a bankruptcy is, but you might not be totally clear on a consumer proposal. That's something that was, just came out in the early 90s. So I'd like to share a little bit about what a consumer proposal is on the next slide, please. Perfect. So a consumer proposal, basically, it's a, a renegotiation of what you owe to your creditors. It's handled through a licensed insolvency trustee on your behalf. You pay what you can afford instead of the total amount that you owe. So think of it as a settlement of what you owe in terms that you both agree. CRA does not take priority over other debts. 
um, an immediate benefit of filing into a consumer proposal is that you're going to get what's called a stay of proceedings. This is a legally binding, I think of it like putting yourself in like a bit of a bubble because once you sign in and you have that stay of proceedings, all your creditors are no longer allowed to call you, send demand letters, put a collections, take you to judgment or any of that. All of that must stop. And sometimes there's a little bit of a lag time, but you just get in touch with your trustee and we take care of that. So um, what you want to look for is a free personalized cons consultation. There should be no charge for that. There should be nobody forcing you to sign on that, you know, dotted line right away. Um, and there shouldn't be ongoing, you know, upfront fees or ongoing fees for that. So a consumer proposal, you know, the fees are all included in your monthly payment. They're not an upfront fee. Um, and basically, you know, it is all sent to CRA, all of your other um, creditors and they, they, you know, are legally bound by it. Thanks for moving to the next slide. So, um, you know, CRA is not willing to enter into in informal debt settlement, nor will they accept debt management plans through like a credit counseling agency. The only way to get that debt forgiveness is through a consumer proposal or a bankruptcy. Um, otherwise, the full amount is owed back to CRA. So only a licensed insolvency trustee is federally legislated to provide debt forgiveness from, you know, your CRA debts. Next slide, please. Okay, this is always the million dollar question. What about my credit score, right? So quickly, I'm gonna let you know, a consumer proposal does show up as an R7 on your credit report. The, the ratings go from R1 to R9, R9 being the worst. R7 is also the score you would get if you have a collections or a judgment and all of those are gonna stay on your credit report. Those will all stay on for six years. A consumer proposal stays on for three years after you complete the program. So yes, there, there is an impact on your credit report for sure. Bankruptcy is an R9 and it stays on for six years after you, you complete your first nine months of you know a first time bankruptcy with no... Um, additional income. So, you know, will CRA debt affect your credit score? Well, yeah, if they take action, if they put a lien against your home or there's a judgment or collection, this shows up on your credit report. It'll also be showing up as an R7 and it's going to stay on there for six years as well. Next slide. So what are the next steps? You really want to know what your numbers are. We've got to get a baseline. Let's figure out what is your current situation? Log into your My Account and just figure out, do I owe CRA any taxes? How much do I owe? What are the fees and penalties? And how much time do I have to pay? And you know, do I qualify for the tax relief provisions, right? Next, you wanna understand all of the consequences for all of the different options that you would have. What happens if they're charging you penalties and fees? And is this something that maybe Mike's team can help you reduce? Um, you know, what happens if they end up putting a judgment or a lien? How does that impact you? What happens if you do fall into a consumer proposal or bankruptcy? Really get an idea of what are all the consequences what if CRA starts garnishing my wages or my, you know, or my bank account or, you know, those sorts of things. So really look at all the different consequences and then get CRA debt relief. You may be able to negotiate a lower or deferred penalty or interest fee through CRA directly. Um, and if that's not enough, you're still feeling overwhelmed, then you really want to get that debt forgiveness. And before you go, you know, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll start selling things or getting rid of our RSPs and things like that. Before you do that, please have a conversation with a licensed insolvency trustee because there are lots of exemptions. The, it, it, the system is set up for you not to steal from your future self, from your RRSPs, like those are protected and they're meant for your future. So please have a conversation before you start liquidating anything. Next slide, please. So this is um, our unique process to reach from which and Smith. We have one toll free number. We're almost right across Canada. And when you call that number, you're going to get in touch with one of our lovely debt relief specialists that are going to treat you with that grace and respect, give you that unbiased in, in, imper, impartial, sorry, information and, and that empathy. And we're either going to be referring you out to an accredited business, or we're going to recommend the consumer proposal or bankruptcy. We'll set up a virtual appointment. Everything is done from the safety and comfort of your home. And once you sign, in you've got that little shield that we talked about and you can start rebuilding um, to your, your worth and that relief and that hope next slide please this is how you can find Bromwich and Smith we are pretty darn social we're on all the social media channels so that's how you can find us next slide 
And that's my contact information. So, wow, I actually have like three minutes to spare. I had my timer on. <laughs> so thank you so much. And I think we're going to be opening it up maybe to some Q&A for us. I just wanted to open this up. I'm going to go back. You can, um, you can see Mike's um, contact information here too. Feel free to take a screenshot. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen now and open this up. Please feel free to ask any questions that come to top of mind. Take, take advantage of having these two experts in the room and there's no such thing as a bad question. So please just um, take yourself off mute or if you feel more comfortable, um, enter it into the chat. Also, yeah, thank definitely. You no silly questions and no embarrassing questions or anything. This is a safe space. And you can always say I'm asking for a friend. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I just want to, I just want to share something and, and uh, Mike, you really brought this top of mind. I um, had my own business for a number of years and, um, and I found myself in that space where um, I, when I was closing the business, my accountant thought she closed it. And then all of a sudden I got this massive bill for GST owing. And, and literally they're like, this needs to be paid today. And it was just really like overwhelming, stressful. And, and it was funny. I, I went to my accountant and, and, and in no fault of her own, but, but she really did look after it for me and in, including calling CRA on my behalf and working it out and, and explaining the issue and resolved it for me. And again, there, I did owe some money, but it wasn't the inflated, inflated amount, but it would be enough to knock you off your game. And I, you said that, I remembered that. So thank you for reminding me that, you know, it's just a, it's a crazy time when that happens to you. And it's very, very intimidating. It is. And he, sometimes these things just come out of the blue and they just hit you. Yes. Uh, a lot of people are still living, you know, I know my, my parents are, and even as I was starting off in business, everybody was scared of the CRA. You know, if your neighbor was from the CRA, you were, you were afraid he'd look up your tax return and find <laughs> ways, ways to cause harm if you weren't a good neighbor. Uh, you know, the, you know, those might've been the, 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 the 60s and 70s eras, but the CRA is, is very uh, departmentalized, let's say that now. In fact, there's so much so is that we had a client that had miss a, had made a payment and it actually went into what's called interim interim payment accounts. Uh, like if you don't owe any tax, they just go, well, we don't know where this $5,000 goes, so we're going to put it into the interim account and it just sits there. Mm. And then meanwhile, he had a GST debt over here of about $10, Eight thousand dollars, and CRA started going moving on collections for him, and and not realizing that the the federal tax account, all these different compartments weren't talking to each other. The money was sitting there; it just wasn't distributed into the accounts where it belonged. So one's going after collections. He already knew he overpaid somewhere, and it was just a matter of bringing it all together and settling it for him. And that's where we had to step in and cue things up. But I mean. You know, by the time he actually phoned us up, he was at the collection stage. And usually mm -hmm. that's about seven, eight months of him trying to do it on his own. Yeah. And it really is tough to do on your own because they just really step in and try to take over. Um, you know, the, one of the poll questions could have been, would you prefer to deal with CRA or, the, or go to a dentist? <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing I want to say, um, just Taz, is that, you know, given that it's Fraud Prevention Month and all those, you know, all the great things that we're doing, it's really interesting to know because when we're in that situation, we often feel super desperate. And so there are people out there that are going to want your money, try to give you a solution. And I love the fact that you said that, you know, like there's a free consultation, you don't need money up front, like all those great things, because sometimes in the middle of the night when we're thinking about our own personal situations, you're trying to find a quick and easy remedy and there are people just waiting to prey on you. Absolutely. I talk about that all the time. Okay, good. I mean, I have to say that just really hit home on a number of things because I know we, we, we read the stories a lot. We see those stories and it's happening to very innocent people that are just trying to help themselves and they're being taken advantage of. So I love that Robert and Smith like provides that without, you know, without the stigma and, um, and then welcoming to, you know, for you to open up and be very candid about our own personal situations. We've all been there. So and the same Absolutely. thing the way I do business, I like to have an, an, a, a free consult with the client just to find out, you know, where they're at and stuff like that. And I mean, I usually provide enough value in our initial meeting to go, 
gee, I'd be just foolish not to go anywhere else. I'm going to work with Mike from this point on, right? Yeah. So, totally. you know, and that's, that's the kind of the philosophy that I take. But commenting on the fraud prevention, yeah. One of the things that's a little heart, heart you know, pulling on my heartstrings these days is that when you get these robocalls that go, we're calling from Service Canada, you owe a tax debt. And yeah. you know what? So number Those one, so Service scary. Canada. Service Canada deals with CPP and all the rest of the pensions. They are not the Canada Revenue Agency. So that's one clue you can maybe take away and say, hey, if you're from Service Canada, you're not CRA, don't you know, go away. And also, you know, they don't phone you up and threaten to put you in jail. No. In fact, most of the times they, they send letters out in advance. But, you know, sometimes businesses move addresses, people move homes and stuff like that. And the mail just doesn't catch up with, catch up with you from the CRA. So sometimes mm-hmm. they do have, you know, collections officers that will call you. And, and try to, uh, you know, just tell you what the situation is. Unfortunately, they're really cryptic because they don't want to disclose any <laughs> personal information until they verify who you are. And sometimes that's a little upsetting too because you, you think, well, if they're asking me what my birth date is, how do I know they're from CRA, right? So then sometimes you just hang up and then you call back or ask them, what number can I call you back on it? And they'll bring you to the help desk or something like that at CRA yeah. and verify that online. Such a great tip. Yeah, it's, it's really important, you know, and don't get panicked by it. If, if you, you know, consult with an accountant or a tax professional, uh, you'll get the advice that you really need. So don't, don't sweat it. Uh, yeah, beautiful. They are intimidating. And just circling back, Maria, to what you were saying, you know, because there's so much shame and stigma attached yes. to people having debt. Um, so that's exactly what happens. It's usually two in the morning that we start like Googling online. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but lately I have really noticed like my Facebook feed, you know, sort of everywhere, maybe because I'm in this industry, but I've heard from other people as well. There are so many pop-ups and ads coming up for debt help of different sorts. Right. And it's just like anything else, like in all industries, there is the good, the bad and the ugly. And it's not that the industry is ugly, but there are, I mean, I know someone called me from Edmonton. I know him from a car dealership and he called up to say, Hey, we're starting our own, you know, debt relief company. We want you to help us with the marketing. And I'm like, what do you know about debt relief? Mm. Right? So mm-hmm. this is why like, it's so important before you make a final decision, you know, to do something about your debt, check better business bureau. That's a great place to start and figure out is this company, you know, is it accredited? What, and go read the reviews and figure out if they're real reviews, okay? There's a lot of companies that post reviews or have their friends that, you know, so vet the reviews, check Better Business Bureau, like, you know, figure, talk to a friend or two and figure out if anyone's dealt with them. And then, you know, I tried to give you a couple of little tips to watch for, right? If somebody is saying, um, hey, we're going to help you out. We're going to represent you. It's going to cost you $3,000. Don't worry. You can pay that over, you know, six months, nine months. It's all good. And then they're saying, and here, we're going to do a consumer proposal. Like that's the middleman. The only person that does consumer proposal is a licensed insolvency trustee. So even, you know, sometimes we don't know what we don't know. So if yes. there are, if you're overwhelmed by debt and can't pay your debts and someone's asking you for another three to $5,000, that should be a red flag. Yes. And if it's too good to be true, it likely is. It usually is. Taz, since, you know, we've gotten to know each other and working together between your organization and BBB, um, one of the things that I really look at when you speak to me about these these types of things, look at it as an opportunity to help yourself, not to dig yourself in and be shamed. You know, if you just turn around the narrative and saying, I'm going to do something for me that's going to... Yes. And I'm going to take that as an opportunity to deal with someone like yourself or people in your organization or, or going to uh, an accountant that is going to be fair and knowledgeable because those missed opportunities are a big thing. I know me, I was like, well, I'll just plug it into my whatever. And literally I'm probably losing. Um, but, you know, uh, but yes, always look at it as an opportunity, I feel, just to do something good for yourself. In that conversation with a trustee, don't look at it as a badge of shame. It's not that at all. It, it's an opportunity to, to get the knowledge that you need to make the right decision. And, and that's, that's where Taz is going to give you that direction. Because let's face it, as I discussed with Taz, you know, sometimes bad things just happen to good people. 
That's right. you, know, you just don't know what the circumstances are that's going to put you in that in that predicament. And uh, you know, sometimes we just have to look outside of our own knowledge and our own sphere to people like Taz or people like myself to be able to. Yeah. For the experts in the community. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and a lot of times it's an error, just like you had talked about. I can't remember what you called it, where they sort of, they just assess, like that happened to me. I was a mortgage broker making a six figure income. And then the same year that we had the mortgage meltdown, I went through my divorce and my husband used to do all our taxes. Like we just decided to separate that out. So now I'm dealing with divorce, all the mental, emotional, financial issues of divorce. And my income went down to less than half of what I used to make because of the meltdown and because I was dealing with this. And I didn't file my taxes because I just couldn't deal with it at that time. And CRA totally, totally missed tax to me. And that's what buried me. And that's what eventually led to me declaring bankruptcy. I wish I'd known Mike back then. <laughs> yeah. But you know, in those moments, you're just, you're so overwhelmed and you feel so alone and you really don't know who you should reach out to. So I really hope that this you know, session today has helped people figure out who some of the experts are in our communities that are accredited, that are safe business owners, that you know, are really people that you can turn to to just at, at the very least get some information and make a really informed decision, right? Beautiful, yeah. I feel like slow clapping for you guys. That was just so <laughs> lovely. That was great. Hey, if you guys don't have any more questions, um, Feel free to go. I know Taz and Mike and myself and Maria will be hanging around just in case you'd like to ask a question or even if you wanted to connect, we can throw you in a breakout room, whatever you would like. Um, thank you so much for attending and um, hope to see you guys soon, either in person or virtually.